Few stories have captured the human imagination quite like the flood narratives of Noah from the Bible and Utnapishtim from the Epic of Gilgamesh. Both tales recount the destruction of the world by divine decree, with a chosen survivor preserving life through the construction of a great boat. These stories, though deeply intertwined by their similar themes, stem from two distinct cultures and religions. Noah hails from the Hebrew Bible, while Utnapishtim's account comes from the rich Mesopotamian tradition. At a glance, the parallels are obvious and striking, leading some to speculate whether Noah and Gilgamesh are, in fact, the same figure. However, upon deeper exploration, it becomes clear that these two men serve entirely different roles in their respective narratives and belong to distinct cultural contexts. They are not the same person but the similarities between their stories offer a fascinating window into the shared mythological heritage of the ancient Near East. Noah's story is a foundational element of the Bible's narrative. According to a surface reading of the text, the world had descended into violence and corruption. Man's wickedness had become so intolerable that God, in an act of divine judgment, resolved to cleanse the earth with a flood. Yet, among corrupt men, Noah alone was deemed righteous in the eyes of God. As a result, he was chosen to preserve life, both human and animal, through the construction of an ark. In Noah's narrative, the moral and theological framework is deeply monotheistic. Noah is portrayed as a passive but obedient servant of God, following the divine commands without question. God instructs him to build an ark, specifying its dimensions and materials, and to bring aboard pairs of every living creatures to ensure the continuity of life after the flood. Noah's righteousness and obedience are emphasized throughout the story, setting him apart from the rest of men who perish in the flood waters. After the flood subsides, Noah's first act is to build an altar and offer a sacrifice to God. This act of devotion pleases God and in return, he establishes a covenant with Noah and all living creatures, promising never to flood the earth again. The rainbow, a symbol of this covenant, marks a new beginning for man. Noah's role, therefore, is not one of survival, but also of renewing the moral relationship between God and God's creation. His story highlights themes of divine judgment, human morality, and a covenant that shapes the future of man. The Epic of Gilgamesh is one of the older surviving works of literature dating back to the 3rd millennium BCE. It recounts the adventures of Gilgamesh, the semi-divine king of Uruk, and his quest for immortality following the death of his beloved friend Enkidu. Unlike Noah, Gilgamesh's journey is driven by existential questions about life and death and his search for meaning in the face of mortality. Along the way, he encounters Utnapishtim, the only man to have been granted immortality by the gods. Utnapishtim's story, told within the larger framework of Gilgamesh's epic, contains the flood narrative that mirrors Noah's. In this tale, the gods, led by Enlil, grow angry at humanity and decide to destroy the world with a flood. However, the god Ea, sympathetic to Utnapishtim, warns him in secret and instructs him to build a boat. Like Noah, Utnapishtim saves his family, animals, and the seeds of all living things, ensuring that life continues after the floodwaters recede. Utnapishtim's story, while similar in structure to Noah's, is rooted in the polytheistic worldview of ancient Mesopotamia, where the gods are often capricious and divided in their intentions. The aftermath of the flood also diverges significantly from Noah's story. Instead of a covenant between gods and humanity, the gods in Utnapishtim's tale regret their decision to destroy the world. Enlil, initially enraged that anyone survived, is eventually appeased and grants Utnapishtim and his wife immortality, allowing them to live forever at the ends of the earth. This reward highlights the Mesopotamian preoccupation with immortality and the human desire to escape death, themes that are central to the Epic of Gilgamesh, but absent from Noah's narrative. The similarities between Noah's and Utnapishtim stories have led scholars to speculate about a common origin.
Both tales involve a divine decision to flood the earth due to human wickedness, a righteous man chosen to survive, and the construction of a boat to save life from destruction. In both stories, the protagonist gathers animals to preserve biodiversity and both Noah and Utnapishtim send out birds to find dry land after the flood. These parallels are not coincidental but reflect a broader mythological tradition that was shared across the ancient Near East. Flood stories were a common motif in this region, where catastrophic floods were a natural occurrence and often viewed as divine punishment. The Mesopotamian flood myth, as preserved in the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Atrahasis Epic, is likely older than the Bible's account, which raises the possibility that the story of Noah was influenced by earlier Mesopotamian traditions. The exchange of stories, ideas, and motifs between these ancient cultures was not uncommon, as they interacted through trade, conquest, and migration. Yet despite these shared elements, the stories of Noah and Utnapishtim served different purposes within their respective traditions. Noah's story, on the surface, is primarily a theological and moral tale about man's relationship with God. It emphasizes obedience, divine judgment, and a covenant that guarantees the future of the world. Utnapishtim's story, on the other hand, is embedded within a broader epic that explores existential themes of life, death, and the human condition. While Noah's story offers a new moral beginning for man, Utnapishtim's tale focuses on the exceptional reward of immortality which remains out of reach for Gilgamesh and the rest of humanity. The cultural and theological contexts of Noah and Utnapishtim stories highlight their differences. Noah belongs to the Bible's suggested monotheistic tradition, where God is all-powerful, supposedly morally consistent, and singular. The flood is an act of divine judgment, but it is followed by mercy and the establishment of a covenant that promises the preservation of life. In contrast, Utnapishtim's flood story emerges from the polytheistic world of Mesopotamia, where the gods are many and often act out of anger, jealousy, or whim. The flood in the Epic of Gilgamesh is not part of a grand moral plan, but rather the result of divine caprice, and Utnapishtim's survival is due more to the cleverness of Ea than to any moral superiority. Moreover, the thematic concerns of the two stories are quite different. Noah's narrative revolves around issues of obedience, morality, and divine justice. The focus is on man's behavior and God's response to it. Utnapishtim's story, by contrast, is part of Gilgamesh's conquest for immortality, a philosophical exploration of life's meaning and the inevitability of death. While Noah's story looks forward to a renewed relationship with God and man, Gilgamesh's encounter with Utnapishtim confronts the limitations of human existence and the elusive nature of eternal life. In the end, Noah and Gilgamesh, or more precisely Utnapishtim, are distinct figures, separated by cultural, theological, and narrative contexts. While their stories share undeniable parallels, particularly in the accounts of a great flood, these similarities reflect the widespread flood myth motif in the ancient Near East rather than the identification of one character with the other. Noah's story is firmly rooted in the Bible's theological and mythological framework. While Gilgamesh and Utnapishtim belong to the rich and diverse tradition of Mesopotamian myth, the comparison between Noah and Gilgamesh offers a fascinating glimpse into how ancient cultures grappled with similar existential questions of destruction, of survival, and of the nature of the supernatural through their storytelling. While they are not the same person, their stories reflect the interconnectedness of human culture and the shared concerns that transcend the boundaries of time, belief, and geography.